Welcome back, everyone. Well, the time has come for me to give you my opinion on Darzeal's only preamplifier, their current flagship, the NHB 18NS MK2 that I have right here. Do you want to know if this $80,000 line stage is worth the asking price? Let's find out. Welcome back to the channel everyone, thank you for being here again, please subscribe, hit that like button, like this video if you want more reviews of the components that I normally live with, I urge you to please continue to give me that support, okay? That's the only way for me to know that you want to see more reviews like today's review. Okay, so I have lived with this beautiful Swiss made $80,000 preamplifier for about the last three and a half months, okay? I'm a believer that you do not need a year or 18 months to understand what a component does, okay? I, personally, I think within the first 30 days, you have a pretty good idea, okay, of what the component is doing or isn't doing for you. There's no need to go six weeks, eight weeks, two years. I know some reviewers out there are living with loaned equipment for 12 months, 18 months, two years, sometimes three years, okay? The perception is that a lot of reviewers, magazine reviewers, unfortunately cannot afford what you see behind me. That's not what I do here at GA's Audio Lab. Everything you see behind me, I buy with my own money. When he hits this door, okay, it's already been paid for in full. That's what you need to know about my review. So I have no skin in the game. I'm gonna tell you what I feel about this product because I've owned it, because I live with it. As a matter of fact, it is for sale at this time. If you are interested in knowing what I have for sale, please visit my website, jaysaudiolab.com and go to the for sale section. That is where I have a lot of the components that will be exiting my lab and you know I have a lot of those that come in and out okay so right now I am selling the Darzeal preamplifier that's in front right here I'm also selling a Bowler 2110 preamplifier I'm also selling a Bowler 2160 I'm also selling some Sasha DAWs that are in excellent shape if you want to see what I have going on and what's leaving my lab check out my website anyhow let's get started with this review Darzeal preamplifier What's good about this preamplifier, okay? Let's get into what I liked about it. The amplifiers that I utilized are the Griffin Apex that you have seen here, and the Boulder 2160, as well as the Boulder 3050 Monos. So I rotated the preamplifier with two different brands, so I'm prepared to tell you what it brought to the table. I remember when I connected it with the 3050s, the Boulder 3050s, Okay, gain a much more beautiful, sweet, romantic presentation. I also love the vocals. Okay, the vocals became more tube-like, which is one of the things that I can say about this preamplifier. It's, an, it's a preamplifier that I feel somehow, some way, brings you closer to the tube experience. The sweetness is there, the feeling of, ah, I can just lay down right now and listen to music for hours on end. It's a very analog sounding preamplifier. And I did like the combination with the 3050 Boulder amplifiers and this. I can say that I could have easily lived with that combination. Now, don't get it twisted, okay? This is not, at the level of a Boulder 3010 preamplifier, okay? This is not at the level of a Boulder 3010 preamplifier, but the Boulder 30 preamplifier, being the best preamplifier I've had in the lab, is $142,000, folks. Yes, you heard me. $142,000 is a boatload of money. But 
I'll say it, it still remains the best preamplifier I have ever owned. Right now, for instance, as you can see on your screen, this is not even plugged in at all, okay? At all. Yet, it's on because it utilizes a battery, okay? So you can say it's in complete off-grid mode. That is one of the things that I really like about this. It takes you off the grid. It's a preamplifier that isn't moody. It's a preamplifier that gave me the least sense of my grid, if that makes sense. Um, yes, we all know that throughout the day, our systems go up and down in terms of performance. But this component, for some reason, suffered the very least out of all the components, out of all the preamplifiers that I've had here. Um, and I think it's also because of the battery, of course. Now, I am a dealer for Strom Tank, so if your question is going to be, hey, what about the Strom Tank you have in the back? Why couldn't you connect the other preamplifiers? I did do that, okay? But remember, that's an added expense on top. This already brings its external battery. Another quality that this preamplifier brought to the table was the nuance the detail that it has, it does extract the detail that's within our music, but it does it in a way that it doesn't shove it down your throat. See, I have owned a lot of components throughout my journey, and components that I can say are very detail-oriented, they have a lot of nuance, they're, you know, they're all about sheer expression and resolution. However, some of them did tend to give me this feeling that I was just ultra focused on all these things being shot at me rather than enjoying the music, rather than enjoying the presentation. That didn't occur with this preamplifier. It, I didn't have that feeling with this preamplifier. I felt as if I could sit there, listen to this beautiful sound and not necessarily be very analytical. I never found myself wearing the analytical hat. Now listen, I understand looks are subjective. I understand that this color is not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Most of our components tend to be silver, uh, black. Uh, those are the main two colors, okay? And I know this sticks out like a sore thumb when you put it in your setup, especially if you do not own the matching 468 models. I get it. But if I erase that thought for a moment and I just concentrate on the component itself, I do believe is built extremely beautiful. The feel that you get from the knobs is perfect. It feels very expensive. Nothing is loose. None of the knobs feel loose, like they're going to come off. And mind you, I've had components, not necessarily pre-amplifiers, but I've had components throughout my journey where the truth is, knobs have come off, okay? We've all had one of those. I don't have any complaints, aesthetically speaking, as far as build quality either. No complaints. Great sound overall, but you know every component has cons. And I'm going to get started on those right now. What are the negatives of this preamplifier? Now I know, I know, most of you come here to find out what's bad about this stuff, okay? Let's keep it real. Most of you are very interested in knowing what's not good about components, okay? Because human beings, in general, we are more interested in plane crashes than plane landings. Let's keep it real. So I'm going to give it to you right now. What's not so good? See, with the Boulder 3050 and this preamplifier, I really didn't have many complaints at all. Really sounded good. Nothing really stood out to me, per se, that I disliked. However, fast forward to my Griffin Apex right behind me. And the Griffin Apex highlighted what isn't at the level of, let's say, the Boulder 3010. Okay. So one of these things being the bass control. Now, I don't know if that's by default. I don't know if Darzeel simply was shooting to sound like tubes, kind of like pass labs, right? 
And with that comes base that isn't at the level of the best solid stick gear out there. This is the case for this line stitch. It's got good base. Do not misinterpret what I'm trying to say. It has good base. Most of you will be happy. But the truth is, I own these monstrous speakers that very few of you own. And so these speakers need all the control you can bring them because of the large diameter woofers, okay, are able to convey to me if the base that I am feeding them is the tightest, the most controlled base. If it isn't, these tell me the truth. And so what happened with this Darcyo was the fact that the base, the notes were there, the base punched deep, but it wasn't layered and as articulate as I remember, let's say the 3010 being. Another con is the fact that it, again, it's a romantic sounding device. So it isn't going to have the dynamics, the huge contrasts of a 3010. It isn't going to do that, but I don't think it's trying to do that. It's not its main job. Its main job is to romance you and make you sit and listen for hours. So I feel that part of the design of this preamplifier was more focused with that aspect rather than bringing you the most devastating dynamic presentation that money can buy. I don't think that was their intent. And by the way, this is not a complaint, what I'm saying here. I actually like it the way it's designed, but if you are looking for the ultimate expression and dynamics, you may have to look elsewhere. Now, another con is, as you can see right now on the back, we only have one set of XLRs in. Now that leaves you with only one balance source. So in my case, I couldn't connect my DAC and my turntable because there's only one set of XLRs in and I don't like using RCAs. I simply do not. Now some say, hey Jay, this line stitch is designed to sound better through unbalanced, single-ended connections. Okay, and that's totally fine, but I don't have any of that in my system. I don't like unbalanced. I do fully balanced, you know, XLR connections only. And so that's one thing that really bummed me out about this preamp. I wish there was even an option when you order it to have two XLRs in at the very least. Some say that all these BNC connectors here, you know, are really the way to connect Darzeal components. This is supposed to be their own connection, you know, that is proprietary to their brand. But again, I don't have a cable and I don't own the 468s. And the final complaint that I have is the remote. I mean, although the remote is very pretty, it doesn't weigh a lot, okay? It, I like the red color. It's very minimalistic. I just feel like I wish it had, you know, input changes there. So I didn't have to get up and change my input. See, some pre-amplifier brands for instance, Luxman, right? They have a preamplifier right now. They have a two preamplifier, the C1000, which I haven't had the pleasure of owning. I keep hearing it's a great preamplifier, but to have no remote control for me, just not gonna work. I just cannot deal with no remote. I don't care if the comeback is gonna be, oh, it's for sonic performance improvements. It's gonna be that much better probably won't guys okay it probably is not going to sound 10 times better because it doesn't have a remote i'm willing to take two percent off of the improvements in exchange for a remote control because every song that we stream or play is recorded at different volume levels and so that involves me getting up non-stop each time i change a song and i'm just not going to deal with that is this one of the best pre-amplifiers that I have had the pleasure of owning? Does this make the cut? And the answer is absolutely. This is one of the finest pre-amplifiers I have owned. 
because it does things that other preamplifiers simply do not do. There is a beautiful feeling and emotional connection to the music anytime you play it through this preamplifier. It never gets bright, it never gets fatiguing, and I know there are many systems out there that are struggling with brightness or struggling with this lack of emotion and soul. This is why I offer my consultation service so that you can connect with me and I can walk you through what I have done successfully to achieve the things you're seeking to get to where you're trying to be today. Stop spending thousands of dollars trying and buying, which I do all day long, and connect with me, talk to me. I live with all of this high-end stuff. You know this by now. So why are you going to talk to the minions on the forums and people with unqualified opinions when you know you have a person right now in the ultra high end that's doing things that no one else is. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video. More videos to come, including the unveil of the next preamplifier. Please like this video, support me, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.